Good evening and welcome to TL Physics. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to talk about harmonics. In my previous video I spoke about how standing waves are produced and it's all to do with a wave interfering with its reflection. Now that only happens at specific frequencies and it's very very important that when a standing wave is produced that a node, and just to remind you, a node is a point where maximum destructive between the wave and its reflection occurs, is at the point of return. So the point of reflection in this part of the wall, that must be a node. That must be a nodal point. If it is not, you have not reached a point where you will have a standing wave. The frequency must change. And this leads us to the idea of harmonics. So harmonics has its roots based in music. And you may be aware of the, ch the effect of frequency and uh, notes. And this is where the idea of harmonics comes from. We'll be sp speaking about musical instruments in another video. But this one I'm just talking about harmonics. Now, the first harmonic is the first time you're able to get a node at the reflection point. And this here is the first harmonic. As you can see, this is only half the wave. So, how we work out the wavelength of this, this is half a wavelength, okay, and as you can see I've got a node here, an anti-node here and another node there. My second harmonic is the next time it happens. This happens to be at a full wave. Okay, and I know that is 2 over 2 wavelength, or 1 wavelength. Now the reason I'm writing it like this is because this helps us um, define how much of a wave it is. At the first harmonic, I have half a wave. At the second harmonic, I have a whole wave. Now, the rule for this, so the rule is the number of the harmonic divided by two wavelengths. And that will tell you how many wavelengths you have got. So at the fourth harmonic, four divided by two, I would have two wavelengths. So it'd look something like this. Let's see. Both at the same amplitude. Another way of noticing it, and this is the way that I also check it, is how many bumps I have. First harmonic has one bump, second has two, fourth has one, two, three, four. Okay. It's also important to know <coughs> that you have more antinodes than you do nodes. So for the first harmonic, I have one antinode and two nodes. For the second harmonic, I have one, two antinodes and three nodes. You will always have one more node than antinode per harmonic. If you ever get questions on harmonics and they tell you, they may say max, they might not say antinode and no, they may say maxima and minimas. So they might say that it goes through a series of beeps and it has a maxima bit and a minima bit. It will ask you um, about that. Antinode is the maxima and these are of course the minima. Remember, maxima constructive interference, minima 
destructive interference. If you are unsure about the question, you're more than welcome to draw the wave. This will really assist you in the future. Now to give you an example of that, is a question that said, I had a microwave generator and I had a wall and this was 1.2 meters long. When I had a transceiver, so my transmitter or receiver here, I recorded nine minima and eight maxima. So I recorded nine minimums and eight maximums, going from this position here to this position here. The question asked me for the wavelength of the microwave. And I drew it. I went, okay, so I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine minimas. And so I just started to draw a wave between them. Didn't have to be perfect here. And then I drew the standing wave in two. And what I have here is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth harmonic. So, using the formula from before, eight over two lambda. So I have four wavelengths in 1.2 meters. This means that one wavelength is 0.3 meters. Some of you may have got that instantly, just from the numbers. Some of you, like me, may need to draw it. It's okay to do either. So that's how you can use harmonics, or minimas and maximas, to work out the wavelength of a wave.